<clears throat> Let's talk about Project Red. I've been teasing this thing for almost a year now, and now I can finally reveal it to all of you. Today, I announce the Truth Ear X Chronicle Zero Red. As per usual, let me just talk about disclaimers. This is not your first rodeo. This is my product. I make a profit out of every single sale. So therefore, I will not be reviewing, I will not be ranking, or even mentioning it in any of my other reviews. And now I shall be fielding questions. Anyone? Ah, uh, yes, you? What the fuck? You spend 10 months to color a faceplate red? Uh? Well, no. The waifu would also be different. Um, better dressed, I might say. But jokes aside, the red is a significant overhaul from the zero. While the drivers might be using the same base, the voice calls have been completely modified. The crossover circuits have also been extensively reworked, so distortion performance is now a lot better, even at low volumes, and can go all the way up to like 114 decibels without breaking a sweat. And more importantly, it features a whole new tuning that I feel is more palatable to a much broader audience. And on top of that, with every single purchase, you get this. An impedance adapter that results in a 3 decibel increase in bass as well as a little bit extra lower mid-range warmth. Unfortunately, with all of this R&D and changes, the price of the RID would unfortunately have to be significantly increased relative to the zero. When I tease Project RED, I see some of you guessing that this would probably be $100, $150. I even see some of you thinking that this would be the next $200 blessing killer. So now I shall finally put all the rumors to rest and announce that the Truth Year Zero Red Edition will be retailing at $5 more. $54.99 USD retail. Beat that. Now all of that is just the simple quick lay down of everything, but there is still so much more that I would like to explain. But before I go deeper into the red, I first have to talk about the original Zero and subsequently the Harman in-ear target. So if you would allow me, let me go into the nerd shit. Let's first put a quick recap on the original Zero. The original Zero was created because of two big concepts. First of all was the subwoofer multi-DD concept. I wanted it a reality and it finally was. The second of course would be filling a hole in the sub $100 market with a Harman tuning done passively. The red, just like the original, has two dynamic drivers, one of which is crossed over like a subwoofer. The crossover point is at roughly 160 to so about 180 hertz, creating that really, really nice 200 hertz bass rise. So from that perspective, the red is not that much different from the zero. Of course, then we talk about the changes to the crossovers, which results in the red being a lot better in distortion performance. But again, it still uses the DD subwoofer concept because let's face it, it slaps. The second point comes down to tuning. As you guys know, the original Zero was tuned one-to-one -to, -one to the Harman in-ear target. But I don't like the Harman in-ear target. I may have explained this a lot in my other videos, but let me just do a quick recap again. The Harman target, or should I say the Harman research, was a statistical exercise asking a few people to adjust the bass and treble knobs and then seeing where the preferences lie between all of the respondents. Essentially, the Harman targets in all of its forms are preference targets, the average of what everyone likes. But the problem with that, of course, is that people think that it becomes a one true target situation where if it doesn't match the Harman target, it immediately is terrible. And then there's also the problems with the Harman in-ear target specifically where while the over-ear target was very rigorous and did like had 200 plus respondents, the Harman in-ear target on the other hand was from an internal panel of like 10 to 15 people from Harman themselves and resulted in what I'll say a very different response from the very well-researched over-ear target. But disregarding all of that nerd shit, they'll probably go more in depth with a future video. My final point is that I and a lot of people actually 
actually don't really like the Harman in-ear target. Of course, there are going to be people who are going to like Harman in-ear 2017 or 2019 because it has less of a tilt and a lot more bass. But to people like me, it sounds shouty, bright, and very bassy, which essentially means that it sounds very V-shaped. So the red would be my approximation or guesstimation of what would be preferred by more listeners, one that would be more of a tilt as well as less of a bass boost. Yeah. Uh, uh, why less bass? Uh? I want more bass. That's actually a good question. Tilting actually shifts the perception of frequencies more towards the lower end. The problem with that is that if you use the bass boost that you had with no tilt onto the one with tilt, it sounds muddy. It sounds like it has too much bass. So what my philosophy for the red is to balance out all of these factors to make it sound not shouty, but at the same time still sounding clean, as well as with enough bass punch so you don't lose out on that low end feeling. And yes, I know, I understand some of you will probably say, yes, there's still too little bass. Well, that's why we have the impedance adapter. This thing would boost your bass by three decibels as well as increasing the lower mid range warmth by a little bit, a tid bit. But in the box, you're just only gonna get 10 ohms. This is just a teaser, just to show you what this is capable of. I'm just tickling your balls with it. And I know the subsequent question is why why 10 ohms? Why not 20? Why not 30? Well, the first big one is that I think the 10 ohm resistor does still result in a rather substantial bass boost. I think this is the sweet spot anymore and I feel like it just breaks the balance altogether. The second of which is just that you get less volume loss. Sure, you get more bass if you use a 20 ohm resistor or a 30 ohm resistor, but subsequently, it gets harder to drive. So my thinking was put the 10 ohm in the package, it's still gonna be roughly easier to drive, or at least I won't get as many complaints that whatever adapter that you're using is gonna be super, super hard to drive. And the last point is that you really can't get this low of an impedance adapter out on the market today. I've, I've seen online, I think the lowest I've seen was 18. Most kind of the lowest is around 25. Then after that it goes up to 50, 75, 100 ohms, but 10? Hard to find. Essentially, 10 is a nice baseline, but if you want higher values, well, you absolutely have the choice to do so. Just go online, just buy whatever you want and use it. It's compatible, easy peasy. And yes, I know, I know the questions they're probably asking right now is how does all this work? It's magic, how, how does it work? Well, it's simple, just Changing impedance results in changes depending on how the impedance curve is for the particular IEM. And if all of that sounds like jargon, it's simple because this thing uses two different drivers, both of which have different impedances. It means that when you stack on something like this, it attenuates or softens each driver at a different rate. So when you plug something like this in, it means that the 7.8 full range driver gets dampened, softened at a higher rate relative to the 10 mm subwoofer. Essentially, that just means bigger bass, bass boosted. There you go. The red is also special for the fact that it is my first collab that is tuned on both the 711 coupler as well as the new Brew and Care type 5128 slash 4620. On the 711, I tried to make it as close to IEF neutral as possible, as well as with roughly a five decibel bass boost. And on the 5128, the interesting thing is that it kind of matches up to about a negative 0.8 dB per octave tilt, as well as again the aforementioned 5 dB of bass boost. So regardless of which measurement rig that you would like to test this on, it would still measure very, very well. All right, I will be fielding more questions. Yes, I see you, please. Yeah, uh, Krin, I already got the regular zero. I don't want to pay more money for different tuning. Well, a lot of things have changed and improved. For example, the entire circuitry got reworked and therefore has better distortion. But I know I've always been a proponent for you don't have to pay for tuning, which is why you could simply go onto my graph tool, just select the zero to the red, EQ it, and then you can have a rough approximation of how the red would sound with your own zero. So yeah, you don't have to buy a red if you already have a zero and are willing to EQ, yes. Yeah, but uh, I don't want to use EQ. then you don't have a choice, mother All right, uh, next question. Uh, yes, you. Why don't you use switches, ah? Uh? 
That's actually a really good question. If you've ever used an IEM with stitches, you realize that it gets rather inconvenient. You have to take them out, you have to use one of those thin like phone things, and then you have to readjust each channel every single time. It's, it's really inconvenient, it's not very easy. The second reason is that you're introducing a lot more failure points. With an impedance adapter, all you really have is that one single failure point, or maybe even two if you count the cable, but it's detachable. With switches, even if you're just using one switch, it's still one switch per IEM. So that's already two failure points, one extra. And if you're using more switches than that, well, congratulations, you've introduced even more failure. The third reason is the fact that it is flexible. For example, with this, there is a 10 ohm adapter, but you could go with 20, 25, 50, 100, all the way up. There is no limit to how much you can actually add on. With a switch, you're kind of just limited to whatever the manufacturer hands you. So for example, if you have just two points on and off, that's it. That's done. You can't really have more choices beyond that. That said, I would still be open to a switch option, maybe with a future variant down the road, but that is really a topic for a different time. All right. Yes. Question. Yeah, uh, what if I don't like the color red? Then you go fuck yourself. No more questions. But of course, as per usual, don't take my word for it. I have sent as many review units as I can to a lot of reviewers. So whenever you can, just watch their reviews, their measurements, their data, etc., etc. I'm just thinking that I've just gone entirely full circle. I've started out by modifying other people's product. Then I've made my own product. And now I am modifying my own product. Time is a circle. Just to reiterate again, the red doesn't make the original zero obsolete. From a different perspective, you could just see this as a variation of Harman, one that is of more of a tilt and less of a base response. Whereas again, the original zero will be less of a tilt and more of a base response, one that is much more V-shaped. So if you like one or the other, and both of which are again variations of the same Harman-ish research, you're not wrong either way. It's just that simply the red is a lot closer to my own preferences. And you know, if you're close to my own preferences, give this a shot. If all of this interests you, then you can just go down to chronicle.com slash red and easy redirect to the Shenzhen audio store where the red would be sold. And for those of you who have bought one, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for supporting yet another one of my wacky projects. And with all of the shilling done and dusted, I shall see you all again and do not die. Fuck off.